you might be interested in what death athletic means. Yes, <laughs> I am. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, it comes from a book. You must change your life. You were talking about like, is it interesting? Like this whole the last ten years, very interesting. Definitely because Cody is such a voracious reader, um, you can't help but you. I had to read a lot to, uh, in order to kind of get to the bottom of things with him and with Ben and everyone. And at one point we were all reading um, You Must Change Your Life by Peter Sloterdijk. And uh, around that time, um, because we were reading it, Cody, if you look on his Twitter, he wrote Death Athletic. Yeah, It I comes that, from yeah. the book. Yeah, it comes from the book. So um, in the book, it's really about, it's like a, a, a religious framework, a death, it, which he uses the idea of a death athlete. Um, bless you. And the religious framework is, it works well. I mean, that's what, how he uses it, but I kind of have used it to like contemporize it to this film, to people who are like pushing boundaries, pushing thought ideas, philosophy, knowing that they're probably going to have a cultural and social death. Um, and we've seen all of that in the last, you know, since 2019 for sure, right? Um, so at the very beginning of the film, Cody says uh, to Tom, live, live, die, repeat. So it's in this essence of like, people are so motivated and determined and uh, know themselves ethically well enough that they will do anything, even if they have to live, die and repeat continuously. Um, because their motivations are more and larger than staying quiet, which mm. is something that everybody needs to do now, right? It's 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 beyond the pale of where we have to stand for what we are now. Um, so that's where that comes from. Hey, and welcome to the Vani Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm your host, Shane Rayo2, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasnia, the self liberator's paradise. Uh, for more information on this parallel network, currently under construction, uh, visit Pasnia, P A Z N I A dot com, or join 150 plus dedicated self liberators on the Pasnia Committee of Correspondence chat on Telegram at t.me forward slash Pasnia chat. Uh, Christ, this has probably been the longest gap I've ever gone between podcast releases, but uh, all change is good. And uh, in this case, it definitely was. Uh, for years, I felt like too much of my time was focused on the digital and, digital and theoretical, and uh, I suppose the short break uh, and the developments on the homestead bring about a, a, a much sort uh, I guess, a sort of needed balance. Uh, but it is still strange. Uh, back in 2018, I was clearly feeling a similar sentiment. Uh, earlier that early that year, I had just started an electrician's apprenticeship job that I really enjoyed, uh, but it was still servile society employment. Uh, my time wasn't my own, and I felt no, I knew there was something more. So I decided to move to Austin, Texas, and move in with my former co-host, uh, Kyle Reardon, on a whim and without really uh, any plans. Of course, this eventually brought me to Acapulco, Mexico with Jason Henza, uh, where I was introduced to the lives of John Galton and Lily Forrester. Uh, but the most relevant part of this episode comes before all that. And uh, that story can be found in the HBO documentary, The Anarchist. So uh, I won't spend any more time on that here. Uh, during my time in Austin, I uh, knew I had to try and get in contact with Cody Wilson and at least go and see Defense Distributed in person. Uh, as with a lot of these cases, I'm not quite sure how things worked out so perfectly, uh, but it did. And uh, on August 24th, 2018, I was chatting with Cody, setting up for a live stream right there at the DefDist HQ. Uh, at that time, I was quite sure I'd be in Austin for a while and offered to volunteer for DD uh, in whatever fashion I was able to. Uh, we talked about some archiving work. Not, uh, not sure exactly what that entailed, uh, but it kind of got left as uh, we'll be in touch. <laughs> And I uh, found out about a week or so later when he was wanted by the U.S. Marshals. And uh, you know, when that drama ended, Cody's, Cody's resignation was in and the fate of Defense Distributed was seemingly at risk. Uh, I attended a press conference there in Austin uh, where Paloma Heindorf uh, got her debut as head of DD not long after. Uh, and to be frank, I haven't followed much since, uh, since then and Cody had been dark for a while. Uh, my old co-host on this podcast, uh, Jason Booth, shared one of his first public appearances, and I think it was 2021, uh, when he was talking about the 0% machine. Uh, but I didn't really give a shit about DD without Cody, honestly, and have quite have heard quite negative things since, even from folks like Ivan the Trill on Twitter, uh, that the DefGas site does require some forms of KYC now. Um, seems to be the case from the brief scan scanning I did over their FAQ page and site. Um, but, you know, it's much like any other, if you're a public regulate, regulate institution, unfortunately, I mean, it's kind of the way the way things go. Uh, and they are a nonprofit, too. Um, and it's not like they have, to, uh, have not had a lot, a lot of attention on them. So um, I guess I understand to a certain degree. But um, 
Uh, but yeah, anyway, um, all that said, I was pleased to learn of an upcoming documentary uh, highlighting the full story of Defense Distributed, uh, updates on DD's fights, um, Cody's fight personally, and current perspectives, and uh, the much larger reaching ramifications, uh, bringing in folks like Jay Stark, uh, the broad topic of crypto anarchy, and just where this crypto war is going. Uh, Jessica Solse is that documentarian and our guest today on the Vanu podcast. Uh, she's, uh, uh, she released a, do- a related documentary called No Control a number of years earlier, and on October 21st, uh, Death Athletic, A Dissident Architecture, will be out for all to see. And uh, therein, you'll hear a minute or two from the Vonnie podcast uh, on, the day, on that day of the press conference. And uh, as I somewhat indicated above, um, Cody was DD, and I don't really know where it is now for sure, but uh, the dis- decentralized, distributed nature of open source technology remains. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, the figures don't really matter, and I think Cody would probably say the same thing. And and in that said, I do hope I can get it back on the podcast soon, uh, which I did send my message yesterday. So hopefully that can uh, that can transpire. But uh, anyway, without further ado, Jessica, welcome to the Vani podcast. Uh, how are you doing today? Good. Thank you for having me. Oh, sure. Sure. Certainly. Certainly. So um, I will, um, you know, I will be honest. I don't, uh, you know, I, I hadn't heard much about you, uh, much about you before you sent me a message. Um, and I haven't watched No Control yet um, either. I, I, I've, I, I guess I watched a trailer of it and um you know, obviously, I like the subject matter, but I have to. The, the small hurdle is that I'd have to borrow an Amazon account. I just haven't haven't gotten around to doing that yet. Um, but I did see your your, your newest. Well, it's, one. Off, it's, mm-hmm. it's off Amazon now, so okay. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, understood. Understood. Well, uh, and you've got your your newest documentary um, coming out soon, which I did get. A, the, the, I did have the uh, you know the honor and pleasure of, of seeing beforehand, and uh, it's a really really solid documentary. I mean, I, I had an idea of what what it would be about, but um, yeah, I mean, I love it. Co- you know, covers kind of from from start to, to where we are now. So, um, but before we get to that, um, I said I don't know much about you, and my audience might not either. So, could you give us a little background? I um, mean, you know, how you got into filmmaking and documentaries, and you know what interests you and, Co- and Cody Wilson, Defense Distributed, and uh, you know the topics that you kind of uh, you cover a lot. So, um, yeah, thanks again for joining. Sure, um, a little bit of everything. Um, I actually did study filmmaking in college, um, and then I ran off and did a whole plethora of stuff: grip, electric, um, camera work, acting. I did everything for a while, personal assistant work, just kind of, uh, I love being filmmaking on sets. Everything is just, just fantastic collaborative, collaborative exercise. Um, I did not know I was going to be making documentaries and in 2010, 2010, dear God, um, 2013, it just fell into my lap. (laughs) It's a long time ago. Um, and that's when I started with my first doc, which was made in around two years called No Control. Um, I just got the rights back. That's why I said good luck. Um, okay, gotcha. It can be found on my website. Yeah, I just got, I took the rights back because sometimes distributors just shelf things like for perpetuity. Um, so nocontrol.com, that was my first doc. Um, Cody happen is in that. It's kind of a film showing the yin and yang of really um, the debate on gun control, but specifically asking can do controls do anything is there any efficacy in this entire debate and battle of like control over arms when they're everywhere easy to get they're they're federally allowed we have the second all that stuff right is it just is it just kind of like a hot air being blown around and then yes especially cut to this new techno political war of digital the digital age where now this information can just be online and it is federally legal to make your own gun it always has been it's pretty amazing how many people still do not understand that that is legal in the united states it's just that states may may wedge themselves their own state rights may uh change up your abilities depending on where you live in the united states but it's always been around um of course technology has made things easier Um, and politics and law is always, you know, chasing after technological development. So, yeah, so my first film was about literally efficacy of guns and very gun focused. Of course, this film is about guns because it's about Cody Wilson's defense distributed and liberator and CAD files and ghost guns and all that. But it also has a much broader topic of what a tool can do in a techno-political um way um as like a very hyper democratic system when you put something online can it really be surveilled can it be controlled is is that a mute is that like no longer possible and um 
So that's a much more and far more reaching tentacle of ideas when you take Cody's story, but you see it as a broader issue of control and surveillance. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is my second doc. Um, I started it in 2015. Um, after I finished my first one, I was just, I was doing other things and I was like, ah, Cody is uh, fantastic on camera. He has strong messaging. Um, it's just, I was pretty obsessed with everything that was happening in this world. And I wanted to continue filming. And there was a part of me that was like, this story and a frustration because everything online you see about we're talking anything 3D guns. It's, you know, five minute blurbs. It's always hyper one-sided. Um, they don't really get into any meat of any issue, really. Media doesn't get into meat of any issue. So I just wanted to kind of sit back and ride the wave. I didn't know that wave would be an eight year wave. Maybe I did, but that's not something you want to like confront at the beginning of a project. Right. So here we are in 2023. Sure. Yeah, it's just like, oh, yay. No, no one would do it. Like, what? <laughs> um, so film's releasing October 2023, and uh, I'm really proud of it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise. So, so I guess um, before we, before we kind of, uh, I, got, I got questions, you know, pertaining to, you know, obviously that documentary, but um, more on kind of, I guess your, your, your perspective on it. Um, do you have like a personal interest, like uh, philosophically with, with these subjects? Um, is it more of just kind of an interest? Oh, yeah. um, um, and uh, I mean, you, and, and you obviously in no control, it sounds like, and from the trailer, you kind of, you try to examine both sides and, 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 you know, kind of be, be, you know, I guess fair balanced and, you know, just kind of present, present the opinions. But um, yeah. Could you talk about your, I guess your philosophical, I guess views that kind of align with Cody in some ways. Is that kind of what it would intrigue you? Uh, could you speak to that? Sure. Um, Cause you brought up no control. Um, and for this film, uh, I really wanted the subjects to tell the story. And I still want that for any project I do. I don't want to um, get in between. There's so much happening. Once you turn a camera on someone in the first place, then also to interrupt um as natural of a moment as possible. I find it frustrating. So, um, and to put my own opinions on films. Uh, so the first film I did, No Control, I just really wanted to step away and see who and what could be most convincing, which I find deeply interesting, which ended up being a, a funny problem when the film was trying to be shown to audiences and sold because everybody wanted it to be one side or the other. Mm -hmm. Even people who didn't see it, who was like pro-gun or anti-gun would like attack me online <laughs> because they always, they just assumed one side or the other. But um, I tried to make a hyper-balanced film, which I find far more interesting because the conversations with people after they watched it, when they were like provoked in ways that never allowed themselves to be provoked before, was like exciting, super exciting for me. So this film, Death Athletic is definitely, um, it's a profile, it's a profile on Cody, it's a profile on Defense Distributed, what's happened in 3D guns, ghost guns, everything. Um, and it's not any anyone pretending to give unbiased opinions. It's, it's a chronicle and a profile and I tried to get as um, close and intimate as my subjects would allow in, in the sense of being in the moment and uh, being allowed to be around. Um, so I don't think it's biased in the way that um, I'm putting an opinion on it, but I do think it represents the opinion of my characters. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, that, that's, so, yeah that's definitely fair. I like that. And, and then getting into the personal yeah, I'm like super intrigued by everything Crypto Wars, <laughs> by every digital technology that's disrupting, by anything where um, the law is so sclerotic that it can't keep up um, and in the end does not represent what people want, does not re represent democratic process whatsoever, and is at a complete loss in the digital age. It's like, uh, uh, what are you going to do? So, of course, there's always the good and bad and people like push the bad. But I mean, you can take that to anything. You can take it to AI. You can take it to everything. Right. In the end, 
people got to decide what kind of person they're going to be in, in the world and carry forth like that. So, um, yeah, I love all, I love this entire world. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same. I think uh, it's funny on the, the Vani podcast, we used to do series because, you know, Vani is a lot of different topics and crypto anarchy and, you know, cyberpunk stuff is just one, one, one element of it. Um, but our crypto anarchist series was like, two and a half years i think like 50 ep like 50 episodes so yeah it's it's okay. it's a big part of uh you know of, of my interests and, and a lot of uh, you know the vani podcast audience is definitely um right in that um in that ballpark and which is why i know they're gonna they're gonna want to check out uh check out uh death athletic uh, when it does come out um but again before we get to before we get to the documentary again i got some a lot of interesting questions i think on that but um i have to ask uh um <laughs> you know because I, I don't know many filmmakers um any really um, so I, yeah, I have, to, I have to broach this with you, but, um, so I'm not sure if you've seen Alongside Night, which is, uh, Jane Neal Shulman's book that was made into, I guess, a libertarian fiction movie. Um, and so I actually run a okay. freedom focused book publishing outfit called Libertarian Tech Publications. We have a number of amazing crypto anarchist, uh, crypto agorist fiction books, like such as, uh, the Brush Fire series, um, by one of our authors, uh, Hashtag Agora, um, which, uh, yeah, another, another amazing okay. one, um, the evolution trilogy and probably more I'm forgetting, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, you know, I love nonfiction and documentaries. I'm all, I'm all into that, but I'm also a big fan of fiction's ability to cut through, um, a lot of the programming and program responses, um, to a lot of these ideas, kind of what sounds like you confronted with, with, uh, with no control in some ways. Um, and the, the role fiction sure. can play to develop these ideas and strat and even strategies for self liberators, um, by offering examples. So obviously I won't be offended if fiction isn't your forte, but, um, I mean, it, and it'd be a massive project, but I guess initial thoughts, what, what do you think about uh, something like that? I mean, I always thought I was going to be doing fiction, so I might go back one day, but I mean, it's all important to like, in the sense of like narrative and propaganda, right? There should be access and creation on all fronts, yep. especially people with messages. Um, so, and I mean, everybody's talking about the best propaganda that's ever, you know, 1984, everything, you know, all these uh, hyper dystopian movies are it's it's the the language of the times right now. Um, sometimes I wonder if uh, those creations are the are the magic that creates the future. It's it's yeah. it's so uh, connected. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, fiction is fantastic. Fiction fiction obviously even brings a much larger audience than the documentary world too. It can reach far, far wider and broader. So, um, I mean, if you're asking me personally if I'm ever going to go back to fiction, yeah. I yeah. might. Any any interest um, or curiosity at all? I guess, yeah. I mean, sometimes it takes eight years as well to, yeah. <laughs> to make something. <laughs> um, but I think my next one's still going to be a doc. So. And very good, very good. Yeah, no, I, I agree with all that. I, I agree with all that. Um, and yeah, it's it's uh, you know um, the fi fiction definitely influences reality, and and uh, reality definitely influences fiction, and, and vice versa. It's funny. Um, I interviewed Uri, Uri Badnar, who's a, cri a crypto anarchist. He runs Parallelony Polis over in, um, or he, I guess he founded a Parallelony Polis over in Prague. And uh, he was talking about yeah. some of their political activism over there. Like, I guess they stole, they played capture the flag with the president of, of that country and they hijacked a, a, you know, a mainstream media broadcasting, you know, uh, you know, um, I guess a channel at one point. Oh. And, um, and, and I played this video game and I mentioned it before, but it's called do sex. Um, and it, it does, you know, it's very like dystopian prog kind of setting. And uh, that's one of the storylines in there is you go and hijack. So I'm kind of curious if they actually, if those, um, if those, if those, that was actually you know, inspired the overlap. By that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm oh, not that's sure. wild. But the, uh, the film is going to show at Parallel Poly at the end of the month, so I'm very excited. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. that'd be that's a good place yeah. for it for it to show for sure. Uh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I was there in 2017. I was there in 2017. I looked around and I was like, I want my film to show here. So <laughs> I like that little magic. <laughs> yep. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, so yeah, I guess we'll, we'll get back to, um, we'll get, get, we'll move on to the documentary. I guess the, the first thing I noticed is an hour and 42 minutes, a lot of, a lot of documentaries, you know, obviously they try to edit it down and make it shorter as people watch, you know, the whole thing, but it's a long documentary. I enjoyed the whole thing, but yeah, hour and 42 minutes, I think was, was the running time on it. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, I guess you, you kind no, of, it's an hour and two, it's an hour, wait, wait, it's an hour and two minutes. Oh, is it an hour and two? Yeah. Yeah. I was like hour and 42. It's an hour and two. Uh, for no control or, or death. Oh, 102 minutes. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, That's okay. I was like, oh goodness, I didn't edit it down more. <laughs> well, and, and <laughs> so I, I might have messed minutes. up on numbers too, but you 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 clarified it. So yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's a it's a longer documentary. Um, I I, I definitely definitely enjoyed it. But um, I guess the, the first question I have because well, yeah, a lot of my audience is you know fans they're fans of Cody Wilson too. But you know I had the pleasure of spending about three or four hours with him at Defense Distributed uh, for a live episode of this podcast. Uh, so I have a little bit of an idea. But what was it like following uh, Cody around for? And I'm sure it wasn't all the time, but you know you know uh, I guess uh, following him around and you know documenting um, you know his life and and company you know what was it like for um you know almost a decade i guess at this point <laughs> um i mean i've had lots of fun it's been inspired and inspiring conversation from the beginning i mean i think that's a lot of the motivation too uh uh for at least for me if i'm going to make a documentary i want to kind of i don't have to agree but i want to learn i want to know i don't want to be around people that are motivated for a purpose um learn why it's infectious infectious um so i mean it's it was i mean it covered so much time that of course there was a lot of uh of course there was a lot of times where it wasn't easy uh at all um but for the most part <clears throat> filming was always i i mean i love to film so much and be around and and learn what motivates people. Um, yeah, it, it's been great. Obviously when things kind of went sour, um, I had to learn as a documentary documentarian that weird moment where you have to kind of respect your creation of a film, but also wanting to respect my subjects. Um, and when you're at a time and working with someone through like hyper tender um, time in their life. It's like, it's a weird thing because you're like, am I being a vulture? <laughs> am I like, in order to like continue what we've started, I have to be slightly kind of like aggressive and, uh, mo hyper motivated in a way that I wish I didn't have to access. Mm -hmm. Um, so there was a lot of learning in that just as a filmmaker on, um, you know, really balancing that line of doing the job, but also trying not to impose mm -hmm. too much. Yeah. So, but for the most part, it was always a lot of fun conversations with everyone, everyone at defense distributed Cody Terrence, Desp I mean, anyone that sat down and talked with me were always lovely, mm -hmm. good people. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. I definitely agree, and that's that's yeah the same impression I got from Cody. He's, he's got like he's definitely got kind of a magnetic personality, I guess you could say. Anyway, um, anyway, I guess um the the other thing I wanted to to mention because you might be able to see the hat behind me, but Samurai Wallet hat. Um, big fan of the of, of uh, you know the yeah. folks over at Samurai. Um, and they I guess had uh, some yeah. they played some sort of a role in this. So could you could you talk about that a little bit? And and I will also say just you sure. know, mention again for for folks that Samurai Wallet is the wallet of the Free Republic of Pasnia. So. Um, anyway, oh, yeah. Where's my hat? I was going to get my hat. <laughs> um, so I had been independently producing and creating this film by myself from 2015 till 2018. Was it 2018? Uh, shoot, everything's COVID, everything's hitting wall. So no, till 2019, I pretty much like hit a wall. I was like, this is time. I had pitched to streaming and streaming um, said no to the film, literally told my PR guy at the time, one person said um, it's on the wrong side of history mm -hmm. because the film is a profile. It doesn't have talking heads giving their, you know, unbiased opinions about what Cody's doing or and stuff like that. It's, it's just in that environment. Um, so since it was on the wrong side of history, I had to come up with a different way of trying to get money to finish this film. And um, Bear Arms and Bitcoin had started in, ugh, I think it was 2021. And um, from the beginning invited me into their group to talk, to show things. And the second or third one, I think in Miami, I showed um, a teaser, kind of like a sizzle reel, what you do to like sell it. And I was like, guys, somebody here, <laughs> I need money. I need someone to get behind this film. This is it. Anyone, anyone, let's go. <laughs> and uh, 
it's kind of like uh, I was just pitching and writing people and I didn't know Samurai at all. Um, and I showed the sizzle and I was standing at the back of the room and he basically immediately, someone immediately came and was like, I love it. Here's the money. And I was like, let's go. And so like, after all these years of like struggling to find someone, it took, it took literally 10 minutes, um, which was nice. You know, it's like, uh, sometimes you really just have to put your, put stuff out there to like get the feedback back. Um, so that really, that was 2022, 2021, it's all blurring to me. And then I started finding editor, um, reaching out, figuring out how I was going to do it. And then that process continued. So Samurai were complete angels. They just jumped right in and um, they're really happy and excited about the film. So it's, it's nice. Awesome. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's amazing to hear. And, and it was, you know, it's unsurprising that they, you know, stepped in on on, you know, this it's like the documentaries, too, are um, and ones like this are uh, like what I mentioned, the anarchist documentary, like my friends and family watch that because, you know, I was, you know, was kind of, you know, I knew people in it. So like this is something else, too, that yeah. they're all going to watch it and they're going to get introduced into a world that, you know, like the way that is presented, um, like on, you know, government controlled media, mainstream media. And um, it's obviously a lot different than what anything else they're going to see, anything else they're going to come across. So sure. Um, sure. It's, uh, it's, it's it is. And yeah, I, it is I must amazing. say. Oh, Sorry. I must say after Samurai jumped in, the wheel started and uh, a fantastic young man named Thomas Donnelly jumped in and also started putting money towards the film. So I just want to shout out to Thomas sure. too, because both of them were super important in the process. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I hope I hope this offers a, a far, far more interesting and a, um, complex perspective. Also, people don't know like the wins and the legal battles and the little the crypto war past of Bernstein and Zimmerman. Like mm -hmm. I try, like it's hard to make a tight, small film. Like the first cut of the film I had was seven hours. Yeah, I, I can <laughs> Yeah, so like through the years, there's a lot, a lot of footage on the floor. Like the joke with my editor was like, I was making a side, I'm going to make a side film just with all the stuff that went in and make it. Um, that's not going to happen. But um, by the time I delivered to the editor, um, it was around two hours and 45. And then we just kept on. Yeah. closing in. So there's so much information, but there is in the film history of crypto wars, history of this techno political fight that continues. I mean, it's like Aaron Schwartz, Assange, everybody, they're all part of this kind of this, this wave of, of war, if you will. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going yeah. with that. No, it's it's uh that's that's an important yeah that's definitely important. So I had a smuggler on. I'm not sure you're familiar with uh, smuggler. Um, he's mm. kind of yeah. In, uh, I met him in 2017. Awesome. Yeah, he's he's a cool dude. But I had him on uh, one of the times I had him on. We talked about uh, he had an article series called uh, the Crypto War or Crypto Wars. I think is what it was called. And um yeah, it's obviously from a really high level technical perspective, but you know also you know just super long and in depth too. But um. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely uh, you know ongoing, um, definitely ongoing, and it's it's not going to stop anytime soon. Um, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, I guess uh, I don't have any any more main questions on the documentary, but more of a uh, <clears throat> I guess uh, so we can kind of get to talking about. Uh, um, well, actually, I'll turn it over to you. Is there anything else you want to uh, want to mention in regards to Death Athletic that's coming out? I know you said it was October twentieth is when it comes out. Uh, where can people find it? Um, uh, the Maybe website, October twenty first. Mm -hmm. So the, the, when the trailer hits, the trailer is going to drop at the end of September. When the trailer drops, there's going to be a presale on the website, um, deathathletic.com. Um, and that is going to be around a month before the trailer also, I uh, trailers, the film drops online. And when it comes online, it's going to be on Google, iTunes, Amazon, Vudu, those four to start. Um, but there will be a pre-sale where you can actually get it straight from the documentarian because once it goes through the whole, you know, uh, SVOD process, like you get pennies. So right. if anyone is interested, come to my website, deathathletic.com. Um, and you might be interested in what death athletic means. Yes, <laughs> I am. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, it comes from a book, you must change your life. You were talking about like, 
is it interesting, like this whole, the last 10 years, very interesting, definitely because Cody is such a voracious reader, um, you can't help, but you, I had to read a lot to, uh, in order to kind of get to the bottom of things with him and with Ben and everyone. And at one point we were all reading, um, you must change your life by Peter Sloterdyke. And, uh, around that time, um, because we were reading it, Cody, if you look on his Twitter, he wrote death athletic. Yeah. It I comes that, yeah. from the book. Yeah. It comes from the book. So, um, in the book, it's really about, it's like a, a, a religious framework, a death, it, which he uses the idea of a death athlete. Um, bless you. And the religious framework is, it works well. I mean, that's what how he uses it, but I kind of have used it to like contemporize it to this film, to people who are like, pushing boundaries, pushing thought ideas, philosophy, knowing that they're probably gonna have a cultural and social death. Um, and we've seen all of that in the last, you know, since 2019 for sure, right? Um, so at the very beginning of the film, Cody says uh, to Tom, live, live, die, repeat. So it's in this essence of like, people are so motivated and determined and, uh, know themselves ethically well enough that they will do anything even if they have to live die and repeat continuously um, because their motivations are more and larger than staying quiet which mm -hmm. is something that everybody needs to do now right it's 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 beyond the pale of where we have to stand for what we are now um so that's where that comes from that's yeah. awesome. I'm glad you mentioned that. I don't know why I didn't have that in my questions, but yeah, that's um, that's amazing. And I was yeah. yeah, I'd never heard an explanation from Cody on it. I don't think. Um, so I'm, I'll have to go check that book out. It ties into a lot of uh, stuff that I've been digging into myself. So I'm, I'm curious. Um, definitely curious. Um, so um, I guess you kind of already touched on this a little bit, but I'll I'll ask um, um, I'll ask just because I, I see if if we can expand on it any further. But um, with really any kind of inspired art, uh, most of the time the artist grows right along with it. Um, like alchemy, it's an inner development just as much as it is an outer. So you know um, you've been working on this project for a long time, um, you know at least eight years, and I guess maybe even um, you know more broadly over the course of the last two documentaries since they're so related. But um, you know what impact or growth, change in perspectives, uh, you know whatever phraseology you'd want to use, etc. Um, have you seen in yourself now that you work of that now that the newest you know work of ours is complete and it's uh, about ready to release uh, to the world uh, i guess where, where are you at now Oof. it's a big question <laughs> well i definitely i didn't definitely didn't know anything about like crypto wars and i mean i learned about bitcoin in 2013 and i was like let's go let's do this so i mean in doing these films i've learned a lot about the technological space and what's getting done in that and also just um, being stronger in ideas, testing everything that's given to us. Maybe this would have come natural to me as well from my past and things that I did, but also I can't, I can't help but have this intertwined in the last 10 years of doing all these um, films, et cetera. So, definitely being around people that are uh, questioning everything, testing boundaries, actually working towards democratic principles, whether you like what they're working towards or not. I mean, changes how one thinks across the board. I, I don't think, I think even people that maybe hate what Cody does can watch this movie and understand the essence of challenge of of uh of the necessary chaos of different ideas um so yeah i mean it's very intertwined for me because it's been part of my life for so long so i can't say uh but yeah um uh, how to say um i guess a lot of my friends are now within this world of crypto anarchy and and creating systems and i absolutely love it and uh it must continue. Mm -hmm. Mention this that you're talking about how long it's been. 
<clears throat> uh, it's just kind of a part of me now. So yeah, 2015 was when I started LUA Radio, which is now the publishing outfit. Um, so yeah, this is what, this is what I've been doing for eight years, and yeah, it's, I, I, I certainly understand the sentiment that you know it's it's a part of me now, and it's not really ever going to leave. Um, so um, and eight years may not seem like that long, and you know, in the span of a lifetime, but um, it's uh, yeah, like I, I mentioned to you, 2018 um, was when a lot of this happened for me. And it feels like a different life, especially after 2020. So, um, yeah, cer sure. certainly, cer certainly with you on that one. So, um, I guess a couple, couple um, questions to wrap up. Uh, um, you mentioned you've got, uh, um, you, uh, you've got, you've, you've got other ideas for documentaries. Um, or actually, no, well, I'll mention this first. Uh, you're, you're, uh, you're, there's a uh, screening at, uh, at Parallel Polis. Um, I'm guessing that's part of Hackers Congress. Um, where else can people, yeah. if, if uh, I guess, the, any additional places people might be, might go uh, see this documentary in person, uh, um, festivals, et cetera? Not yet. Not yet. Um, it's been hard to get in festivals with such a film. <laughs> um, uh, but hit me up. If you want this in your city and you have ways, uh, let's bring it to your city. I, I've had a couple of people trying... Um, so it has parallel and pulley. It's going to show at, um, well, it's going to premiere in New York and Austin. Um, and then in October, um, probably at the urban assembly, fingers crossed. Um, and then working on other things, maybe Anarchopulco in February. We'll see how that goes. Um, but bringing it in theaters to an audience, like I would love to bring it everywhere. Um, I'm still trying to get into a couple festivals because you never know. Mm -hmm. But that that's all right now. Gotcha. Well, moment. well, maybe next year, hopefully, that we could work out. I know. Um, so Vani Fest is too early this year, I guess, for um, for or at the timing. I guess it's. The, I, I think Vani Fest is the same, same time be... as Paralympolis, um, which is a problem yeah. at this point. Um, if I'm ever going to go out there, but um, yeah. So so uh, mm -hmm. so maybe maybe next maybe Vani Fest five. Um, you know, it'd be out for a while, but uh, maybe we could get you out here and have a screening right. here for uh, for a bunch of Paznians and, and self liberators. It'd definitely be um, definitely be right to, yeah. Right, uh, right in our wheelhouse. So um, that would that would be cool. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Um, I think it's it's great to. I mean, I love talking about this film afterwards. It's fun. Um, so missing that in person, not missing. I mean, it's about to start, but far prefer it than watching at home and then having no one to talk to about it afterwards. <laughs> yeah. So, but people can go to deathathletic.com and subscribe and I'll, I'll be putting out mailers and information. So when, when screenings pop up, everybody can know. So if you're interested, if someone's interested in like staying in touch or my Twitter, Jessica Solche, um, yeah, that's how you find out. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and uh, you yeah, obviously have all those links uh, in the show notes. But um, now I guess we'll talk about the future. You've done two, two documentaries kind of in this and uh, in this and in in, you know, these topics. Um, any plans for, for upcoming films or documentaries that you want to speak about now? Um, anything we can look forward to? Uh, I can't really speak about it. I don't want to jinx it. But um, I, I didn't. Uh, I do have a, a documentary in mind right now. Um, I'm very excited about it. I just have to convince. Um, someone to give me access so you know i i don't I, I think as if people when people if you watch death athletic um i think the most important part of it one of the most part, part parts of it is how much access um cody gave me um how much i was able to come in and out how wonderfully open defense distributed was everyone that works there the crew um you will meet Ben Denio, who was only very briefly in something in 2013. Um, he was opened and willing to sit with me because I had kind of built a relationship with him over the years. Um, John Sullivan, who is the very first engineer, who basically was the, um, he is the engineer for the Liberator and Ghost Gunner. He's he's the guy. Um, he's never been on film. He's in my film. Um, so everybody is just very open, was open to me throughout the entire process. So with this next film, um, I'd only want to explore that even more um, and not go backwards. Um, somebody asked me, like, why, why aren't you in your films? <laughs> Um, and I was like, I'm not interested in a journalistic opinion piece. Um, uh, I want it to be as much of a film as possible. Um, like 
like a fiction film almost like you're into it you're into the characters you're into their motivations what's going to happen next all of that um and ride that wave that's far more interesting yeah yeah certainly well i'll I'll look forward to it um and like i said for all the listeners i really enjoyed uh yeah i really enjoyed death athletic and uh, you should definitely um, definitely um check it out when it drops uh here not very long um but uh jessica that's all of that's all i've got uh um, for today uh, any closing thoughts okay. any closing thoughts for the listeners uh, before i let you go um well thank you for having me uh i really uh hope you enjoy it um Yes, subscribe and keep keep up to date. And uh, definitely, this is a, a film that requires you know feet on the ground marketing. <laughs> so independent film. So if anyone is so thrilled and moved by the film or the trailer when it drops, like all I can ask is please share, mm-hmm. please spread the word. Word. If you're a journalist, reach out to me, talk to me, podcast or anything. Just like let's go, let's do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I guess what one other one other question are you going to have like uh, actual like DVDs for the for the documentary or will it just will it be, just be digital? Um, and I ask because um, we well, offer yeah. we offer more than just books on the LA Publication site, and if we can help sell it, you know, um, purchase copies from you and then sell yeah. them to our, our people, we'd be happy. We we do that for a lot of stuff, so I'd certainly be happy to help you out there. Thank help you. There. We actually um, I partnered with Massacre Video, and they're putting out Blu-rays, hmm. um, and they're going to be selling it to Amazon and they're going to be selling it to like, um, brick and mortar stores and stuff like that. Okay, cool. So I don't know if there's an overlap there, but we can discuss sure. and there's merch. You can also get merch. Nice. <laughs> nice little death athletic hat. <laughs> right on. Well, I'm, I will definitely have to look into that. Um, and yeah, so deathathletic.com is the <laughs> website for that. So uh, anything else before I let you go? No, thank you for having me. Hey, no problem. Because that's really the issue that we're dealing with, with these, you know, ghost phones, ghost pads, whatever, is that there's no way that you can organize with with other people and have these distributed tribes if you have a snitch in your pocket all the time. Mm -hmm. People are literally wearing wires all the time. They have a snitch in their pocket and they're trying to do clandestine things. That's never going to work. I'm focused on this project now because I really see how the unfettered flow of communication is what really has prompted this, you know, shift in consciousness. And that if this does, if this can't continue this way and people can't communicate freely with each other, then all the dis- distributed networks that have formed um, aren't going to be very effective, and they're not going to, uh, they're not going to be able to do what they could do. Um, if you can't communicate, especially when you're basically part of a dispersed tribe at this point, if you can't communicate without being monitored, it basically hamstrings anything, you know, anything going forward. Step up your privacy and order a ghost phone today. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash ghost phone. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash ghost phone. And make sure to keep a lookout for more ghost pads, privacy tools, freedom boxes, and more. LibertyUnderAttack.com is the website. Liberty Under Attack Publications. Share your story. Find your freedom. The intent of the GhostPad is to offer a complete security and privacy hardened computer system that is built from the ground up to be an effective direct action countermeasure for those who want to actively resist the privacy intrusions of the the entire surveillance state Hydra, both public sector and private sector. A user-friendly computer that the owner maintains exclusive control over every aspect of its operation and has complete control over who accesses what data. A ghost pad is your virtual corner of the room where the cameras, microphones, and other data collection devices have no power. After all, power comes from ownership, which is exclusive control. Unlike practically any other available option, when you buy a ghost pad you are truly its owner. 
and while the masses beg and bleed to their political corporate masters to loosen their chains, Ghostpad owners can use their systems as virtual bolt cutters and cut themselves free. Ghostpads are high-quality business rugged laptops that have had the security compromising system firmware, BIOS firmware, Intel management engine, etc., removed and replaced with more secure, free and open source alternatives. The closed source binary BIOS firmware has been removed from the system board and replaced with free, as in freedom, alternatives as well as the Intel management engine also being neutralized. That combination makes them more secure by design, and preemptively thwarts any attempts by threat actors, both public and private, to gain access by exploiting its vulnerabilities, either by an engineered in and hidden backdoor, or a zero-day exploit in the factory, supplied firmware or the Intel management engine. Perhaps the most important security privacy enhancing feature these systems have, is the neutralizing of the aforementioned Intel management engine, I'm. The IM is a separate computer and a computer that is embedded into all Intel platforms made since 2008. It has its own operating system called Minix. It operates out of band meaning that your primary CPU has no access to monitor what it is doing, and it has direct access to all the hardware that your primary CPU does, making it the ultimate embedded spying device. If you can't audit what it's doing, it's always on when the computer is plugged in, or has battery power, it has its own network interface with its own MAC address that can bypass any system firewall configuration, it has its own storage you have no access to, it can access your microphone, camera, keyboard, can record keystrokes, and display, can screenshot your encrypted communications, while you are reading and writing them. The IM can only be disabled, by modifying the system's firmware. That can only be accomplished by using an external programmer to reprogram the chip that stores the system's firmware. Only select laptop models can be modified. We concentrate on the compatible models with the highest performance available. We offer models that are 2x as powerful as any configuration sold and supported by Lenovo. Transitioning your computing activity to privacy-hardened platforms is a direct action strategy to resist the attempts at total omnipresence by the surveillance state. To put it simply, these systems are some of the few available that are likely compromised in some way on the firmware level, so they are some of the most secure and private available for use cases where that those attributes are the most important. It is also why systems configured this way are considered as ideal to use as a base to install a security privacy hardened OS, such as Cubes OS, Parrot OS, or other privacy focused Linux distributions. On. To view the full selection of ghost pads, ghost phones, and other privacy tools available via Liberty under attack publications, just visit libertinderattack.com forward slash privacy tools. What are you waiting for? Step up your security culture today. Again, libertinderattack.com forward slash privacy tools. Liberty under attack publications, share your story, find your freedom.